Nine dramatic Premier League final days. May 11th, 2008. Roy Hodgson's Fulham came into the last day of the season knowing that a win would cap one of the greatest escapes in Premier League history. Considering they were mathematically relegated at halftime weeks earlier, this was quite a turnaround. A 1-0 win at Fratton Park, courtesy of Danny Murphy's header. Yes kids, there was a time when he wasn't just an epitome of cliches stuffed in a commentary box. Seal their survival. Four goal wins for Reading and Birmingham City over Derby and Blackburn respectively meant nothing as they slipped into the championship. Elsewhere at the top, Man United sealed their 17th title with a nerveless 2-0 win at Wigan, finishing two points above Chelsea who drew one all at home to Bolton. May 13th, 2007. Angry Neil Warnock is not one of life's difficult jobs. Just remind him of the 06-07 season and you're halfway there. Carlos Tevez, legally contentious winner at Old Trafford, kept West Ham up, which led to Neil Warnock screaming about court cases until he was blue in the face. For the Blades, they'd only themselves to blame. A win over Wigan Athletic would have kept them up in a winner-takes-all clash. However, David Unsworth, who had left the club six months earlier, stroked home the winning penalty for the Laddocks. May 15th, 2005. No team who had spent Christmas Day propping up the table had ever stayed up. At 3pm on the final day of the 04-05 season, that's where West Brom still were. In one of the most dramatic final day twists, Brian Robson masterminded a 2-0 win over Portsmouth, courtesy of a strike from Man United Loney and future England star Kieran Richardson. Alright, it was 2005. Crystal Palace were relegated at Charlton Athletic, Jonathan Fortune's 82nd minute equaliser sentencing them to the drop. Southampton's 2-1 home defeat to Man United sent them to the bottom of the pile, while the Norwich defenders seemed to forget they still had a football match to play, losing 6-0 at Fulham. May 7th, 2006. With the title and relegation spots having been all tied up by the final day of the season, Spurs arrived at Upton Park ready to finally finish above Arsene Wenger's Arsenal and achieve Champions League qualification. But of course, a dodgy dose of cuisine put paid to that. Both West Ham and Spurs have waved goodbye to their stadiums, but Thierry Henry's hat-trick against Wigan helped Arsenal see off Highbury that day. With Spurs needing a win at Upton Park, they choked. Jose Benyoun's late winner consigning them to UEFA Cup football. May 9th, 2010. Every Manchester United fan was a supporter of Wigan Athletic on the morning of May 9th, 2010. With a point separating Chelsea and the Red Devils going into the last day of the season, Sir Alex Ferguson needed a result from the Laddocks, however unlikely. However, Wigan had contributed to one of Chelsea's six league defeats that season, winning 3-1 at the JJB Stadium in September. So could another shock be on the cards? Absolutely not. Carlo Ancelotti's side put eight past them, moving to 103 goals for the season, with Didier Drogba's hat-trick helping him to the golden boot in the process. The Italian lifted the FA Cup two weeks later and was sacked within a year. Antonio, don't get comfy. May 16th, 1999. With Manchester United on course for a treble, first up was Spurs at home in their final game of the season. A chance to seal the title ahead of Arsenal, who were lying just a point behind them. The Gunners did their job, Canoe's goal proving to be enough to bag three points against Aston Villa. For Ferguson, he may have been sweating it after falling behind to Les Ferdinand's strike. United's players looked edgy until David Beckham's wonder strike and Andy Cole's predatory finish swung the pendulum. May 22nd, 2011. Pretty much most people in football would have liked to see Ian Holloway and his brave Blackpool side stay up in the 10-11 season. Their goal tally of 55, equal to that of 5th place Tottenham, was a demonstration of their adventure. Although their concession of 78 goals shows how they couldn't defend for love nor money. Needing a win at Old Trafford, they took the lead at the Champions League finalists through Charlie Adam and Gary Taylor Fletcher, only to finally succumb 4-2, conceding a cruel Ian Everett own goal along the way. Wolves 3-2 home defeat to Blackburn Rovers would have sent them down on 40 points had Birmingham City won, but they didn't. They lost 2-1 to Spurs. And Aston Villa gave Alex McLeish a job anyway. Well, they've only themselves to blame. May 14th, 1995. As a Manchester United fan, if you're relying on Liverpool to help you out in the title race, you know you're pretty desperate. With Kenny Daglish looking to secure a Premier League title at Anfield, at Manchester United's expense, you couldn't blame them for thinking Liverpool would just roll over and die for Blackburn Rovers. However, Jamie Redknapp's last gasp winner could have sent the title to Old Trafford had United managed to find a winner at Upton Park. Ludek Kloszko, a man who most probably have never even heard of, turned into Peter Schmeichel and produced an array of world-class saves. The game ended one all and Blackburn won the league. May 13th, 
2012. The final day of the 11-12 season is famous in that it was the last game Bolton played in the Premier League. And I think there was a game in Manchester too as well, wasn't there? Sir Alex Ferguson had claimed Man City had both hands on the trophy as they faced QPR at home on the final day of the season, knowing a routine win would seal their first Premier League title. How routine was losing 2-1 at home with minutes remaining to 10 men before a last minute strikes from Eden Dzeko and Sergio Aguero wrestle the title back from the red half of Manchester, who had done their job in winning 1-0 at Sunderland. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.